Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, I've got Southampton versus Newcastle today. Weather's looking a lot better, he says, famous last words. Hopefully it'll stay nice and flat like this. There's a 10% chance of rain, so fingers crossed we should be okay today. No rain covers needed. But um, one interesting point today, uh, during the week, obviously with the corona outbreak, coronavirus outbreak, the Premier League have stopped all handshakes before game, before the kickoff, with uh, the managers and the players. So we'll see what they get up to. Could be a thumbs up or something, but I'll try and grab a frame of whatever they do. So that should be quite interesting. And then I'll just go over my autofocus settings today, um, what method I use, and uh, try and show you a bit of that on the camera. And also I'm gonna have a go at a bit of pan blurring today. So I tend to use a second uh, lot of settings and I, I'll set that to function on the autofocus on button on the rear of the camera. So I'll show you how I do that as well. So I've opted to go Southampton attack first off and I'm going to sit exactly the same position I did a couple of weeks ago, just, just off the corner flag and hopefully if they score they might run this time, this, this way this time. Obviously last time Shane Long scored and he rang in the opposite corner. Still got the goal okay from here, just a bit of a better angle than sitting over there obviously because Shane Long was at such a tight angle most of the lads that were sat over there actually were shooting through the goal net. So. So uh, yeah, I'm going to sit here for the first half anyway, see how we get on, hopefully get a celebration this way. Um, reasons for Southampton attack first half, Newcastle haven't got a great away record. I know Southampton haven't got a great home record, but I think Southampton might just be a little bit stronger, but we shall see. And then uh, we'll assess the situation at half time. Right guys, I'll quickly try and show you what we call the safe shift button. So into menu, hit the info button three times, that takes you into that screen. Hit the Q button, and then obviously you can scroll down to custom controls, and set that. Now this obviously highlights different buttons on the body, and I'm gonna use the AF on button for my second lot of settings. So, oh, it's gone, let's just go back to that. Right, I'm too slow today. Right, so scroll down to the AF on button and select that. Then obviously you want the recall shooting function. So into that now, info detail set. So press info and that'll take you to your settings page. And basically you can then go into these and you can choose whatever you want. So obviously I want to look at, at uh, panning settings. So into manual. Now my shutter speed, I'm going to pre-guess it at 30th. Obviously you can take it and set it to whatever you want. So 30th. Aperture, I'm going to go for F11 and see how we get on. Obviously, I can alter it at a later time. And then ISO speed, I'm going to set it to 320th. Again, I can you can alter all these. Meter in mode and then so on and so on. White balance, I'll keep it in cloud because it's a bit dull today. Autofocus, tracking sensitivity. And that is basically it. And then just hit the menu and that is now preset. So we'll take it off that. Now, if you look in the top screen, if I can light it up, I wonder if it'll work, it might work a bit. As soon as I hit that AF button, it changes my settings. You see that? So I'll be tracking a player, getting normal speed frames, and then quickly touch the AF on button. It'll give me the panning settings that I've, I've already put in. And that is it. That's as simple as that, really. Let me just grab this. And I mean, you can also, we were talking earlier on in the coffee shop, you can, you can set that second lot of functions to whatever you want one of the guys in the coffee shop said sometimes if the pitch is half covered in strong sunlight and the other half of the pitch is shaded you can put a second lot of fun uh, settings in that function in the safe shift function to compensate for that sunlight as the players run into the sunlight so it's a it's a great little tool i'm sure most of you are already aware of it but it's just, i just thought it's, it's something that i used and i thought hopefully you might be able to add it to your photography Right, focus method. I tend to use single point focusing, specifically because I can put that single point onto an individual player during the game. Obviously I'm in AI servo, so it's tracking the players all the time uh, as they run towards or away from us. So yeah, I use the single point and then, this might be a bit tricky, but so I'll use a single point and then say, uh, I'm trying to give you an example, say the referee is about to approach a player to give him a yellow card, say, and he's on the right-hand side of my frame, I'll touch the shutter button, get the focus point live, and then I'll scroll 
So I'll get it live and then I'll scroll across to the right hand side of the screen where the referee is. Obviously he's going to be in focus then and focusing. Now if something happens quick, as I'm, say, say once I've, I've got that frame, got the referee giving the player a yellow card, referee's on the right hand side of the, the screen, uh, composed, the focus point is on him and then I quickly want to go take that focus point back to the centre of the, of the viewfinder, all you basically do is press that joystick and it will take you back to the last position that your focus point was in. So if, if you can get that, so I'm panning the referee on the right hand side, all that's finished, back to normal play, just press that joystick button once and that will take my single point focusing back to the centre of the screen to carry on. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm sure you guys are aware of that. And you can set that in the functions and I'll just quickly show you that now. So just one second, I'll just put this down again. So again, it's in custom functions and then scroll down to the joystick. It's highlighted there on the screen, if you can see that. And then select that and then you can either only two options you can either have it off or to control your single focus point and that's what I use for that so so it's a really it's a really handy method it just speeds up speeds up your flow basically so hopefully you can add that to your photography right one question I had this week is what mini tripod I use for the remote goal cam so it's a newer, or newer, newer, however you pronounce it. And it's a CK30, handy piece of kit. So obviously you've got your, your camera mount just on the scroll, on the wheel there. Comes off. So that's good. And then you've got your 360 ball top, which is handy. You can extend it as well, which is great. Gives you a bit more height. I tend to use mine at the extension just to get a bit higher in the goal mouth. And then you've got three settings on the lock, lock tab. So that's the first setting. The second setting is really almost 90 degrees look. Really stable that. And then you've got various different positions that you can have the legs at. All twist lock. And it is a lovely handy little piece of kit. Fits in the bag fine. And that's what I use for my remote camera. I'll put a link in the description. I think they're about 35, 40 pound on Amazon. So cheap bit of kit really and uh, really handy. You can use it, you use it anywhere, you know. Use it for landscapes or whatever. So I used it on the beach at Brighton not long ago to uh, do a time lapse on the pier. So uh, yeah, great little piece of kit. So on the video last week, I was telling you about the internet ports are all in one box. I think there's six, six or eight ports in one box at Bournemouth in each corner. And the difference is here, look, you, I don't know if you can see in behind me, there's a port every two or three foot that we can plug into. So uh, there's a few more here as well. And they stretch all the way along. So uh, that's the difference at Saints. It varies from ground to ground. So I've just plugged into the, the wire. I've taken a test frame. We're all connected, we've got the set symbol in the screen there, so we know we're all ready to go. So I'm just gonna hit the set button to send it. Let's see how long it takes. So the land's flashing, should flash quicker in a minute. Transfer in there, it goes flashing quick. Just looking for the circle now, and there it is, all sent. So I know the desk has got it, so we're all good to go. So I'm gonna make my way back to the press room now, grab a quick coffee, and then head outside and see if we can get some fans. Too many fans today unfortunately but you've only got 10 minutes outside the ground really to try and find a fan that looks quite photogenic but nice to get the Newcastle fan with the mask on that's uh, quite relevant today obviously so just making my way round to the corner flag now to get set up shoot a bit of warm up and then make my way to the dugout for the manager's non-handshake <laughs>
That's it, all done. They shook hands anyway. Time to kick off. So that was quite interesting. Gineppo originally got a yellow card for a bad foul, but then referee Graham Scott came across to the pitch side monitor to look at the VAR replay and changed it to a red. So Southampton down to 10 now. just awarded Newcastle a penalty after a handball. Interesting first half, plenty of VAR. I think we're Saints down to 10 men. I'm going to stay this end and do Newcastle attack second half. Move some of my kit round two behind the goal, we'll just get the rest of the kit now and uh, get set up there for the second half. it 1-0 with a nice somersault celebration too
pretty standard game and then Maximan scored. Cracking celebration, as you've seen. Best one of the season, I think. Great sort of salt. Just getting the goal cam, but I don't know if there'll be anything on that. We shall see. He slotted it in from quite a way out, so might not be anything on the goal cam, but fingers crossed. Right, get packed up now and catch up in a bit. Well, that's it, 1-0 in the end. Cracking celebration from Maximin. So, uh, I've had a quick look at the frames, they look okay, so see how we get on with them. So, good celebration, best celebration so far this season. Right place, right time of course, but worked out all right, so. I tried some panning, I might have got one or two pan blurs, but I'll have a proper look on the laptop when I get back. So, just making the way to the van now and head home. Thanks ever so much for watching guys, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up and awesome if you could hit that subscribe button. Catch up again soon.